So everyone, this is uh, Peter Charcalis with my new my new series, the Artisan Spotlight series. I'm really really proud to have Eric Hardesty with me of Reef Point Soap. So Eric, Eric, how are you doing? Hey, good. Yeah. How are you doing? Great to see you. So you know, I did do a little bit of research, and I, I I found out that so you're a software engineer by trade. Yes. That's what you do. That's my day job. Yeah, yeah. yeah so <laughs> you must really get sick of software. So you're you're a software engineer by trade, but then you also make software. Yeah, totally different kind of software, though, yeah, of right? Of course. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I'm in the software business, too, so I, I get it. But uh, I wish I was smart enough to make soaps. Man, I would love to, be, love to be able to do that. So, which brings me to my question. How did you get into the soap-making business? Well, um, so it started, I guess, uh, maybe about a year or so ago. Well, no, a year and a half or so ago. And... Um, I was watching uh, YouTube videos with my son. My son was six at the time. And we were going through this phase where he liked, um, he would ask me questions about how do you make cars or something like that, right? And we'd, we'd watch some videos on how you make cars and um, jets and various stuff. Like the Discovery Channel, you know, how it's made, that, that type of show. He really, he really liked those. And he asked me, you know, how do you make, how do you make soap? I said, well, let's, you know, let's check it out. And um, so we watched... Uh, I watched a couple of YouTube videos on um, on how to make soap, and um, I had always been interested in chemistry, so um, that was one of the things. Had I not majored in computer science and it's in college, I probably would have majored in either mathematics or uh, um, chemistry, and um, it was just it was something that interested me, and um, uh, I said, hey, you know, that looks like a lot of fun, and so I, I got some stuff, and I made... Um, uh, bath soaps to, to start out with. I made a, uh, uh, so I started that way. A lot, lot playing with different colors and different formulations. That was a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of fun to do. And at the time I was starting to get into wet shaving and, um, I was using, uh, the, the gateway drug of wet shavers, uh, Parasa Green Green at the time. Everyone's and Parasa. Was, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's all about the Parasa. So, um, you know, I, I was using that, and I had used some artist shaving stuff, and, and I said, um, you know, I wonder if I could make something. I wonder if uh, – I think I can do – I think I could do better, um, maybe reduce the um, – so for Paraso Green, for me, I really like the scent, um, but for my skin, it tends to it tends to dry my skin out. Uh. Um, so I wanted to see if I could get something that maybe um, – had a little bit lower coconut oil content in it, so it seemed like that was – so my, my soap, the – that's where it sort of came from is, you know, I wanted to try to make something that would work really for my skin type and, um, figuring that, you know, if it worked for me, I'm sure it's going to probably work for other folks as well. So, mm, interesting. But it's, that's how it started. My, my, my son asked me a question one day and basically from that point on, it was like, this, this is just really cool. I want to try to learn how to do this. I want to, you know, it was testing different stuff different formulations, making different sense. I mean, just to open up a whole, I mean, I had no idea I would like it and, yeah, right, um, right. and until I saw it and, uh, and just enjoyed it quite a bit. So when you start getting into this, yes, you know, making your first batch of soap, I would imagine mm -hmm. the first batch was awful, right? I wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's so the, the first batch, yeah, my, so my first batch of, um, uh, bath soap was, it was, it was basically a Castile soap. It was almost all um, co uh, olive oil. Um, mm. So obviously that, that takes a long time to, to cure, and it was unscented. And, um, I mean, it was good soap and everything, but I wanted to try something a little bit more colorful. So I wanted to try um, different colors and um, different um, different scents. And actually, so the, the wet shaving community, we, we, there's not a lot, a lot of um, – uh, not a lot of folks who do like really colorful bar soaps mm -hmm. um, that are out there. Um, but there's one soap maker, um, Clyde Yoshida, who has um, his soap company is called Vibrant Soaps. And he does just masterful. He's an artist. Mm -hmm. and he does just does masterful things with um, with cold process bar soap. And um, it was just very cool. So I like I like watching his videos. Um, he does. He does just, you know, amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, Earl Grey and Ginger, I get, um, does does pretty well as a, as a bath soap. And um, Test Depth does, does pretty well as a bath you're soap. Mean, you're in this stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that stuff. In yep. preparation for this meeting, I've been wearing this all day. <laughs> or all afternoon. I, um, 
I, I, your soaps are really good soaps. And, um, oh, thanks. <laughs> so, you know, the, the first soap that I uh, ordered from you was the espresso soap. And yeah. I still have it. I have a very little left. But um, this stuff here, just, it's just, it was yep. just a sample. And that's the, the uh, that's the original label right there. Yeah. It, yeah. So, um, <laughs> man, I mean, but it's still the scent is just intoxicating. I don't know. What, I don't know what what you put in here, but it's just a great smelling scent. All of your soaps that I've tested are wonderful. I mean, they smell great. They perform great. I mean, one of my favorites is I, I already showed you their their Earl Grey and Ginger. But the, the so for those that don't know. I mean, this this soap is just fantastic soap. Soap. The first time I saw someone use this was uh, Chris Bailey, and he was just mm-hmm. raving about about the soap. And I, I knew I had to get. And I saw other guys talking about it. And I, I don't think I've met anyone who didn't like this soap. It was just it's absolutely <laughs> wonderful. I mean, it's really great stuff. So you have tallow and and vegan. Do you have a a, a preference yeah. uh, personally? Um, uh, I prefer it to, to me the for me personally. The base, um, I, I just like something that is is uh, is slick and yeah. has um, good post shave feel. I'm I'm not as concerned with so in my for my soaps, I, I trade off the ability to make this um, you know really fast voluminous lather. Uh-huh. And I trade that for um, a really thick, dense, um, cushiony, uh-huh. slick lather. So that's the, the, the trade-off that I make. So it's lower in coconut oil than, say, um, uh, some other soaps, so like or Parasso, for instance. Right, right. But that's a good trade-off. I mean, isn't that part of the fun, building up the lather? I mean, yeah. I, well, I, 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 yeah I, 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 well, first of all, I don't find that yours is, uh, takes an inordinate amount of time to, to lather up. Um, oh no no no! It's yeah. I mean, it's um. There's there, but there are trade-offs to be made, right? In when you when you're formulating a soap and um, uh, mine, I wanted something that was going to make soap that was uh, pretty dense and 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 cushiony, and and those were so those were my goals when I made it. And something that say I originally didn't have any have any aftershave products uh-huh. and, and balms, and those came later. And so I wanted to have a product that that I could use um, that uh, you know would deal with the fact that I didn't really use aftershaves very much, right? So I wanted something that just sort of stood on its own, and I would do a cold water rinse, and then that would be that. Um, but then um, once you start down the once you start down getting aftershaves, then I mean it's just I mean there's a whole well you know it's for the wet shaving community and. Um, I, I enjoy the whole the whole process now. I mean, from shave to soaps and, and aftershaves and uh, um, balms. I use now an aftershave and a balm every day. So. Yeah, well, you know, me too. I just started a, a forum. <laughs> uh, was it yes, yesterday? Day before yesterday. You yes. Join. Did you? No, you joined already. You, you're in, right? Yeah. 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 Right. Yep. Uh, shaving so- for the for you guys that don't know, shaving soaps and good stink is the name of yes. the forum. Because you know, more guys are getting into matching and pairing up the soaps with maybe the same aftershave or something that complements it in a good EDT. So that's what the, yeah. the well, that's what it's all about. But yeah, guys, are, I think it's, it's I think it's a great idea to match up the scents and offer the aftershaves and the bombs. Um, are you are you finding that more and more guys are are doing that and buying aftershaves and wanting to smell good? I mean, I always like a strong scented soap as you probably know. So I like to comp yeah. that soap. I really like to smell that soap when I'm shaving, and then just mm-hmm. finish it off with a with a nice, nice matching aftershave. I think more and more yeah, I mean, are into that. Yeah, I think I, I think I would agree with that. Um, I think that uh, you know, it's it's good to have a strong smelling soap, but you can't make the scent so strong that it you know if you make it too strong, of course you can irritate folks folks skin right so yeah, there's there's a there's a balance yeah. there right yeah and um so there i know people like in general prefer stronger um, stronger scented soaps so we have to be very careful that we don't make it um too strong but then of course if, you know having that aftershave there is a nice way to you know sort of continue the experience and um yeah so you had mentioned the espresso soap mm-hmm. and um that was one of the um, yeah, so one of my first soaps, um, the, the first sense that I had, so that's, you actually had the like the original packaging with the original with label. That's not even waterproof. Yeah. Um, that was like you're held, you're an early adopter. Held up though. Um, actually, held up pretty. What's well. that? It held up pretty well. 
Oh, good, good. Yeah. I mean, I have some soaps after the first use. <laughs> you know, the labels start to disintegrate or, or they bleed. So, yeah. So, anyway. But, so, I, I, I had considered making an aftershave for that at, at one point and, um, as my, my initial batch of aftershaves. And I said, well, you know, I don't know if espresso would really go as an aftershave with, um, you know, I don't know if people really – enjoy smelling like coffee um you're talking about pairing scents and once i actually once i actually made it and and put it on (laughs) um i enjoyed it quite a bit but then the pairing that i like when i when i use the espresso aftershave is um i use that with eau de beau and i think that or um i think uh uh spice bomb would work well with it um yeah, so there's sort of so, – yep, that's We didn't, we didn't set this up, by the way. I just got all this crap on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, type, that type of uh, – t- or um, I've had folks um, tell me that they've uh, used bay rum with it. So I've also used uh, um, a, a bay, rum, bay rum scent with it, something spicy, which mm. – which, but I like I, – you know, I like um, trying different combinations of, of soap and aftershave and, and – Even like an, a barbershop scent would go – Really, yeah. uh, I mean, that's so vague, isn't it? Bar- everyone has their own barbershop scent, but every soap right. maker's barbershop scent smells different. I mean, you have Seville, well, Barrister, I- and Man, you have yours, Cat. I mean, they all smell different, but the, to me, they're all, they're all wonderful. I think that's the fun. Those are that's the fun part about um, that scent family, right? So there are a couple of scent families that that there are. There's a a large area to to be creative with, right? Um, barbershop is one. Uh, uh, sandalwood is another one, mm. and um, like fougier is, uh, is is another one. There's a lot of room for creativity um, in those. Uh, uh, sandalwood, even though it, there is actually sandalwood essential oil, and I have actually I purchased some sandalwood essential oil. It's incredibly expensive stuff. Um, but if you were to scent a soap solely with sandalwood essential oil, first of all, it would probably be irritating to the skin because you'd have to use a bunch of it. Um, but second of all, you, you probably wouldn't smell too much, <laughs> um, because it really is a delicate, it's a, it's a pretty delicate, um, scent. So there's a lot that, that's why soaps that say they are sandalwood or, or, are sandalwood soaps have such a wide variety because there's, there's sandalwood means different. No two things. smell alike, really. That's right. For yeah. Most part, yeah. Right. I mean, you've got to- tops is just way off the charts. I mean, it's, the tops is more like a cologne, right? Yeah. And then you yeah. have um, uh, Katie's Bubbles, which is very, very light sandal. I haven't smelled your sandal, but I heard it's very good. I have to, I have to order that. But it's a, yeah, mine is mine is um, uh, a darker, um, so earthy, very dry sandalwood mm. um, scent, scent. So it's not, not, it's not floral. It's not, um, it's not like Art of Shaving or uh, Taylor of Old Bond Street. It's very, um, it's very earthy. Mm. So it's a. Is it so, different? I've heard some compare it to Perazzo Red. Um, I haven't exactly. I haven't used Perazzo Perazzo Red. I know that's. Uh, um, I have smelled it, but I haven't used it, so I don't. Did, I'm not sure. Did you find it was similar? It, it's pretty close. I okay. mean, not exact. It's not. It wasn't designed to be a duplication of of any um, of any particular scent. It was just um, you know a sandalwood scent that I enjoyed and mm-hmm. that um, I used. So, um, that's how it got. Yeah, got I love, I love sandal. I mean, I, I, I've got, I've lost count. The last time I counted, I had 130 soaps, but, um, I think I'm past that now. I think, oh, really? Yeah. I would, uh, I need to order a few more. I want to order some more of yours and there's a few more I, I need to get. And then I, I think I'm done for the year. I need to, and now getting into this, this, um, this new, uh, forum, with all these frags, I'm getting introduced to all these fragrances. Spent yeah. all this, I thought soap, spending money on soaps was, was bad. This stuff. I yeah. one fragrance. That's like, <laughs> I'm done for the month. <laughs> it's because it's so expensive, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I what are you going to do? <laughs> so we were talking about these soaps, and you talked about how yours is similar to Parasso. Do you ever go into it thinking, because a lot of soap, soap makers do this, where they there's a really good, maybe a fragrance out there, or um, a soap maker, maybe they want to um, mimic uh, um, ADP or something. Um, do you do that, any of that? 
I know your intrepid. I've, I think is a takeoff of Brew, right? Yes, yes, and that's the that's the one where um, I did do that, and um, so I have some. I have in general pretty sensitive skin, and for the longest time, the only like uh, like deodorant product that I could use is Brew. It's the only thing that didn't really? cause me to like break out. So. Hmm. Um, I've been using it for quite a long time, and uh, so that was one of the first scents that I did was um, was Intrepid because I wanted a Brute shaving soap because Brute doesn't make a shaving soap. Obviously, they make aftershave splashes and they make a balm, but they don't make us you know a shaving soap. So that was one of the things that uh, that I did. But yeah, that that's one of the um, one of the ones I've done. Mm. Mm-hmm. Anything in the future as far as uh, um, matching uh, maybe a fragrance or an, a, another type of soap with your own little spin to it? Um, I don't know. I tend to like to um, – I, I, I want to try to do more scents that are sort of um, like unique to me, mm, That's good. I guess. Yeah. Um, so I don't really – I don't want to do too many duplications, so especially of like um, popular ones that, that, that already exist out there or that – um, you know, so it wouldn't make too much sense for me to do like a duplication of Chella or something like that. Right. Because, well, you, know, you, you can get Chella, right. It's, it's pretty, pretty easy to get that, get the authentic thing. And, um, um, I'd rather just try to do something unique to me. Mm. No, that's smart. That's smart. So, um, so what, what, out of all the soaps that you have, what, do you have a particular favorite? So I, I get that asked, I get asked that from time to time, <laughs> um, it, it rotates, to be to be honest with you, right? So there are some times where um, I'm making. So for instance, maybe I'll, I'll I'll get a bunch of orders for Dragon's Blood. I'm making a lot of Dragon's Blood, and in the morning I don't want to smell Dragon's Blood anymore. I want to smell, you know, um, tranquility, right? I use uh, uh, the my that's my lavender and uh, peppermint ones. I'm a sucker for lavender. What are you gonna do? Yeah, um, I, I am too. Lavender and sandalwood. I'm telling you, they're my Achilles heel. <laughs> yeah, well. I mean, Fougere Santal has lavender because it's a it's a uh, it's a Fougere, and it also has sandalwood in it. But it's not just purely those two scents. Um, but um, yeah, so Command Presence, uh, my new soap, I tend to use that quite a bit. Um, I use uh, Tranquility a lot, um, as one of my favorites, personal favorites. And then um, in the fall, I like Bay Rum, although I, although I don't I don't make Bay Rum anymore, but. Um, in the uh, in the fall, I like that quite a bit. And then, but I also use like other other artisan soaps and other mainstream soaps um, as well that that are that are in my rotation. So mm. um, I'm I'm a big fan of Tob's sandalwood. Um, yeah. So I, I use I use that as well. Um, uh, Bear Stern Man, I use uh, I've got their products, Soap Commander. So um, yeah. I've, yeah. To- I got a, I got a bunch of stuff too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. So yeah, Top Sandalwood. For me, it was always my favorite sandalwood. Um, the, I love the, that strength of the scent. I mean, yeah, it, yes. yeah, and yeah. so it was one of, I think it was the second soap I ever purchased. So I, my first was Purasso. My, mm-hmm. my first two. I had Purasso blue and, and green. And I mm-hmm. also ordered top sandalwood, and I just fell in love with that scent. And then from yeah. there, it just kind of blossomed. And that was always my go-to. And I always, I always, in fact, I have like probably four tubes still. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I go, I go to London often for, for work. And when I, I always visit all the, you know, all these stores on German Street. Oh, oh I'd love to go. Oh, I would love to Eric, go. Eric, you have no, you have no idea what it's like. You go in there. So yeah, German Street, and it, it's all uh-huh. these clothiers, right? And they all, I mean, I mean, you have. Uh, all these handmade suits. I mean, these guys are all sharply dressed. I mean, old, old money, right? And then right next to it is a shoe shop from the 1700s or 1600s. And they just, you know, make their own shoes there. And it's, it's just all just very, very classy and sophisticated. But then you have Tobbs. And um, you go into Tobbs. It's a little store. It's not that big. But in the back mm-hmm. room are all these old-time barbers with the old-time barber chairs. And people are getting shaved. I mean, it's just it's very, very cool. So I'll have to wait to make sure I have at least you know two days worth of growth there before I before I go get get a shave at uh, my my next my, my, my next trip out I would I think I want to go to True Fit and Hill I've been there I think I want to get uh, my my shave over there it's a little bit less busy less hectic mm-hmm. and I was actually thinking this would be cool actually I was I, I was thinking of um, videotaping my shave that would be awesome wouldn't that be cool yeah so, that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, Tobbs. So I, I always have Tobbs uh, sandalwood on. But 
now that I, when I kind of grew into this, I realized, you know, as, as great as the scent is, it's not necessarily the best performing soap. Although it, it does lather up really quick, but, right. but you know, there's no real post shave or anything like that. There's really no slickness there. So if you're a, a straight, are you a straight razor shaver or do you shave I, for the DE? What do you? I'm not. I use I use a DE. I've got two. I've, I have two DEs. Um, a um, a Merker 34C and then um, a Maggard's uh, MR5. Mm. So my 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 razor collection is quite small. Uh, my soap collection is where I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have more soaps than razors. Right. Well, you know, when I first went into into this hobby, so I, I went into this to save money, and I ended up my the the first three. Yeah, so did y'all, right? <laughs> The first first three months, I spent more money in, than I did in thirty years of shaving. <laughs> it's, it's insane. I just when I when I get into something, I just go gangbusters, and I ended up having like thirty razors, you know, within a very short period of time. Now I have like I think two de razors, maybe three. Uh, the rest the rest are all, all all straights for me. So we we're touching on the um, the artisan soap. Makers, other other artists and soap makers. Do you do you have like a other than yours? Do you have like a go to artisan that you really like? It's like your favorite. But I do have. Um, so I can tell you, I've I've got Katie's Bubbles, mm. um, the Bear Stern Man, uh, Mickey Lee Soap Works. Yeah, I've got the um, the La Belle de Sud mm-hmm. uh, from them. And um, let's see. Oh, I'm missing. Oh, um. Uh, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. Mm-hmm. I've got Club Club Guy because I also love Clubman. Yeah, and then I've just got uh, tons. I've got tons of Tobs. I think I've got one of everything that Tobs makes, <laughs> right. uh, clo- close to everything that they make. Right. Uh-huh. I don't have I don't have um, avocado. Uh, I have smelled it though. At, when I went to the Maggards meetup, I was like, I went right to the, I went to the Tobs area and was like <laughs> going through all the stuff. So, yeah, I mean that had tobacco in the name. And um, people saw that at the at the farmers market, and they wouldn't even pick it up. And they and they would even they would even say, "Oh, tobacco! Ah, you know, I can't, you know, I can't do that." Um, and uh, that's why my soap that used to be called Tobacco and Bay Leaf is is pure, peerless. It's called mm-hmm. Peerless now. Yep. Um, because I had I had them both side by side at the farmers market, and people would they would not pick up the Tobacco and Bay Leaf. But they would pick up the Peerless, and they would smell it, and they'd say, oh, that smells great. That's and right. What's in that. it? What's in it? Yeah. I, I think right. I, I have your tobacco and bay leaf. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right here. Yeah, this stuff, this is, you know, um, this stuff smells really good. And, yeah, I don't have, I really don't have, any, actually, I don't have any left. It's like probably one yeah. more. That's good, good stuff. So what's next for, uh, for Reef Point? Well, um. Let's see. So I've recently expanded my um, aftershave line. So I started with um, with six aftershaves, and um, now I've got aftershaves, alcohol-based aftershaves for um, almost all of almost all of my soaps. And um, uh, recently expanded the balms now too. So now you can get um, a soap, a balm, and an aftershave matching for folks that really like to match um, to match the whole scent. Um, and then I've got a, I've got a couple other products that that um, that I'm working I'm working on. Um, I have done some small um, liquid soap um, s- stuff just sort of locally. I haven't put any of that um, online, and um, a couple other things um, under in test right now just to, to see how um, folks react to it, see how get get some feedback on it. Good. Always experimenting just to happen sort of like behind the scenes, right? mm-hmm. and it's. Uh, um, lots of stuff doesn't make it, you know, and, um, uh, I just keep playing around. Yeah. Well, I think that's common with, with a lot of soap makers, you know, just mm-hmm. keep trying all, all these different, um, different fragrances and see what, what, what you like, what works. And then, and then you have to put it in the soap, right? And yes, because it may smell great as a fragrance. It may not necessarily be great in the soap, right? That's very true. I've, I, I mean, I've, I've had, um, I've blended up a fra- fragrance that I, that I really enjoyed and that worked well as, um, as an aftershave. Um, but when I put it in the soap, it just, it, it almost disappeared. The fragrance just, I mean, the fragrance just wasn't there. It wasn't, it wasn't the same character of fragrance as it was in, in the aftershave. And, and so I couldn't use it. And it was, uh, it was, I was really, you know, we've, really we've been, uh, about a half hour 
And uh, I think that's maybe probably a good time to uh, to, to wrap up. Uh, now, I've been doing these marathon sessions. <laughs> I don't know if anyone wants to sit through a, a marathon. I think maybe – I think we hit the sweet spot. So, uh, yep. So I can't tell you what a pleasure it's been uh, to finally speak to you. And well, thanks. You via, via Skype. You as well. Long, long time uh, watcher of your videos. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I have, I have fun with it. So, uh, but it's been a, a pleasure. I really enjoy your soap. So, um, I mean, I tell everyone, I mean, Earl Grey and Ginger is like, pff, everyone should have that in their oh, well, den. Thank you for what you do. And um, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to speak to me, but to speak to everyone else uh, that'll check it out on, on YouTube. So thank you for your time. And I, I'm well, sure thanks. we'll run into you uh, at some point, hopefully. So, yep. all right. Good to talk to you. All right. Good to talk to you. Thanks. All right, thank you.